Well, let, let's start off. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Man, I am a 47 and a half year old young man, Southwest Little Rock, born and raised Southwest Little Rock, man. Uh, let's see, where do I start? My parents are from a small town called Tucker, Arkansas. Well, my mom's from Tucker, Arkansas. My dad's from England. But I've lived in Little Rock since probably the age of eight, eight, nine. My parents moved here. Uh, been in church all of my life. My mom served as church secretary for several uh, what we would call, well, Little Rock's first mega church was a church called uh, Greater Paradise Baptist Church. It's on 12th Street. Uh, we had a very popular pastor at that time. He went on to move to Atlanta some years ago. But again, I've been in church all my life, but I had a uh, desire to want to street, see what the street life was about. So, you know, I got in trouble at 16 years old, went to prison, uh, did four and a half years, got out. Uh, and even in prison, I knew that God had a call on my life, but I I was hesitant upon my release because, again, I'd been in church all my life. I had heard the stories of how people treat people that may have go to prison, come out, found God. They put them in a different category. Wow. So I ran from accepting my calling as long as I could. But uh, it happened. God just was like, come on, come on, son. You, you promised me you would do something. And he just... He just boxed me in, man. So I've been, I accepted my call to ministry 22 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, served, served uh, my local church, served at uh, Second Baptist, uh, Gary, uh, John Barrow, and they had a Guy Springs location. So I served with them through my ministry. And six years ago, God called me to start the Mercy Church. So we this we're coming. This is our sixth year. October will be well. Actually, uh, March will be our sixth year, but we we don't celebrate till October because we're a part of the Southern Baptist Fellowship. We got introduced <laughs> to the Southern Baptist Fellowship, and we had started our church uh, fi uh, February March of 2015. We got introduced to uh, the Southern Baptist Fellowship about three months after we started our church, and then they introduced us to. Guyer Springs First Baptist Church, which is on I-30. When we got that relationship, like I said, we were, we were holding church inside of a United Methodist Church. They were nice enough to let us start our church inside of their church, but we got introduced with Guyer Springs First Baptist, and they offered us a facility on Scott Hamilton Drive, free of charge. So that's where we are now, 8705 Scott Hamilton Drive. We've been there, uh, and we met, we've been doing ministry there, uh, since then, we we were already reaching out to the community, uh, giving free meals to the community once a month and offering things of that nature. On a smaller level, we'll offer them fruits. We'll go to the corner on Friday mornings and offer uh, fruits and pastries to people on their way to school and on their way to uh, work and things of that nature. <laughs> we did that the first, and, and we use this as a testimony. We've been doing that once or twice a year for the whole five years. Last year, during the pandemic, God saw fit to connect us with some individuals, with farmers to families. We were able to give produce and apples and oranges to the community. And in the midst of that, we met CityServe. We were introduced to CityServe. So our relationship with CityServe started last August, August of 2020. And let me tell you, it has been awesome since we were first introduced our our evangelism and our outreach ministry has went to another level uh, with our partnership with CityServe, man. I, I know I rushed through where I am, but I mean, that's where we are now. Like I said, we've been doing outreach. We've been doing things in the community. It's something that when we got introduced to the uh, Southern Baptists, they introduced us to outreach. Because I, like I said, I've been in church all my life, but I know church. Right. I know church. I know Wednesday night, I know Sunday morning, but outreach, I mean, it opened my eyes to so much. Uh, it was something that, it was a desire that I had that I didn't know. It was an unfound desire. Let me say it like that. And it's just, we've been able to reach, I get phone calls every day, Pastor Long, can you help us with this? Can you help us with that? And I tell them, you know, as far as some stuff, we only get once a month. But building supplies, I said, you know, if somebody's trying to fix up their home or do some stuff, I let them know, hey, we, we're able to do this once a week. My schedule is just so hectic. We just have to find uh, the right time to get you guys in and make sure we coordinate times and trucks. But 
in a nutshell, man, like I said, I'm married, I have a wife. We've been married 22 years. We have two children. I have a 21-year-old and a 10-year-old. Yeah, big gap. <laughs> I've got I've got a twenty one year old a ten year old but I got an eighteen year old in the middle so in the middle okay 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 well you understand how it is like <laughs> I said we uh my twenty one year old we thought we were we we were looking and saying hey when he was when he got to to the age of a teenager we were like okay we get him out of school we might be able to start our life all over <laughs> but that's not what God said uh, ten years ago Parker came along and like I said we've been enjoying life man we've been enjoying ministry in the city where I grew up at and we enjoyed our partnership with city serve man uh, I, I met you we we did a, a, a radio interview a few months ago that's my first time I didn't know about a drew Davis I knew Cesar I knew Tony I knew Carson but I didn't know I didn't know that you were the mind behind all of this. Uh, so, so I mean, it's an honor to be on with you this morning, just to share more about uh, what you. And again, when our Forrester to family connection ran out last year, now we have come, uh, Caesar called last month and said, "Hey, we got got connection with with a uh, Farmers to family. Would you guys like to receive a truck?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> so last Friday we were able to bless. Uh, and what I do is. Uh, I'm kind of lazy. So instead of distributing all the boxes, all 1,100 boxes from my church, I, and again, I come from the street. Uh, I'm a very transparent person. I used to be a drug dealer. When I got the call that we were going to get another 1,100 cases of boxes, I got on the phone and called different pastors. Guys, I got a shipment coming in that I could not distribute on my own. If you guys can meet me at my church, I will give each one of you guys a hundred boxes a piece to take back to your community. So we have uh, over nine churches from across Arkansas, Arkadelphia, Clarendon, North Little Rock, West Little Rock that we support with the produce boxes. And they come, we unload, we send them back to theirs. And I might give away a hundred or two from my actual parking lot to my neighborhood. Uh, because we're a small church, uh, we have to really, really dig in and get volunteers because I have more women than I have men and the men I have a lot are older, but I be coming from the street. I reach out to the guys that I ran with and say, hey man, I might not get you to walk through the door on Sunday morning, but can I get you to come to the parking lot on a Friday and bless the community? And that's been, it's been great, man, guys. They calling me, when the next time you're doing something in the community? Like I said, these guys, I, I might not get them to come to church on a Sunday, but they're open to volunteer and to meet the needs of the community. And I slide little three minute sermons in when we're working together on the parking lot. So. Absolutely. And that, that's the beautiful thing about city serve and farmers to families and all this is it's not about one church. It's about the overall kingdom. That's it. And it, that's it. it's about taking those relationships and leveraging them and I mean, we've got pastors that are seeing people that have never walked in the doors of a church, walking in the doors, receiving Jesus, all because someone gave them a bed or a box aye, of diapers or aye. a piece of food and, and just kept loving on them exactly where they were. Yeah. And no. I mean, you and I, I'm 48. I'm ahead of you just a little bit. Okay. I grew up in Conway. Okay. Okay. And so I banging in the rock and that, world you grew up in was the world I was told don't go down there I totally understand I totally understand and so it's it's really interesting kind of the story you're telling is the first hand of what I was getting third and fourth hand information about of just the, the community that you grew up in you talked about going to church on 12th I mean, right. wealth was the main corridor for things. It was. And it was. Talk about what's going on in Southwest, and it, it's still there's so much of that '80s culture in that community of yes, okay, I don't know if I can trust you. Those things, and it's so refreshing to see a church say, it "Doesn't matter if you trust me, I'm gonna love on you anyway." Ex exactly, and that's what we do. We're actually in the process of trying. Uh, we tried it uh, when we first started, and it kind of dwindled. But our Hispanic community in Southwest Little Rock is so large and we service so many Hispanics. I got to get me a Hispanic pastor on staff to meet the needs of the Hispanics that we can't reach. Because every day after school, from Monday through, excuse me, Monday through Thursday, we have after school meals uh, for children after school from mm -hmm. four to 5.30. 
And with the diapers, we service so many Hispanics with diapers and the meals after school. And I'm studying every day and I'm seeing them come and I'm seeing them being blessed. And I'm saying, man, I got to capitalize on this because we need to be able to minister to them mm -hmm. in their culture. Culture. I, I know Ola. <laughs> I know Ola Kumasta. And I learned that from my wife. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I need someone to help me to reach these individuals, to be there when they come to maybe minister to them and maybe try to start opening the door to more Hispanics to grow our ministry more, even more and grow the kingdom more than anything. But the, the, we've been able to communicate with them and it's been awesome. Like I said, if you ride by the Mercy Church any day, Monday through Thursday, uh, between, between four and 5.30, you will see parking lot packed, individuals grabbing their meals and and now we have a volunteer who's doing a clothing pantry a lot of clothes and stuff been do donated to her and every wednesday from 12 to 2 we have a soup kitchen so she sets up the clothes and some people make soup chicken noodle soup and or beef stew and things of that nature individuals are able to come and get this on our parking lot but they're blessed by the clothing pantry and listen i made an order for city serve and we got some insulated bowls with lids. That's what sparked me. I said, man, these are great soup cups. I said, man, let's try a soup kitchen. But it was off of us making an order, getting receiving from City Serve. And I'm like, hey, this is perfect for a soup kitchen. So that's been a blessing. Uh, got to get some more next week. But that's been a blessing for us. But man, there's one story I got to tell you uh, about, been about a month ago now. I woke up and I watched Channel 11 News and CBS News was on, uh, a segment was on. There was a young man who was colorblind mm -hmm. and his friends for his 21, 21st birthday bought him a pair of glass shades that allows him to see color. This was like on a Thursday. We had got a city serve order in on that Wednesday, but some of the ladies, they separated the stuff because we we're getting ready to do a big parking lot giveaway next week. But they were separating the stuff. And I went in the next day, that evening, I went in and I was just looking at some of the stuff. And I picked up a box. And I'm like, because there's been some shades in some of the orders. One time I got some shades. I said, I'm keeping these for myself. I look good in these. But these particular shades, they were in a box and it, I, it looked different. So I read the box and I opened it up. And lo and behold, it was a pair of those same glasses I seen on the news <laughs> that help colorblind people see color. So Bible study, I went live and I said, hey, man, if y'all know anybody that's colorblind, we want to be a blessing. I told them the whole story. That night in Bible study, I told the same story. And there was a lady in our church that goes to our church. Her uncle is 75 years old, been colorblind all his life. Mm. She was able to take these glasses to her uncle. And she said, they said that next Sunday, it was like, he didn't take them off. <laughs> he has been having them on every day. And I mean, that was just, that's just one story. I'm like, look at God. I see it on the news, how this young man was blessed with some glass shades. And then through City Serve, excuse me, through City Serve, we acquire a pair and were able to bless a man 70 something years old that had never seen color in his life. I mean, it's, it's things like that that I'm like, God, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Through the partnership, if it hadn't been the partnership with CityServe, we wouldn't experience that. We wouldn't have been able to experience that. So that's one major story. We've given away furniture to for individuals that got burned out and all of that. And all of it is a blessing. We we celebrate it. We but this is one story that I said, just the the way that the events happened within the day and how God connected the dots. And I'm like, only God can do that. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. You were talking earlier about you've been doing, you've done some of the building supply stuff. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about what kind of projects you guys have been able Listen, to Listen, actually, we have one going now in England, Arkansas. Uh, that's where my family come from. Uh, but there's a young lady that needed a place to stay. We knew someone that had an old house. We said, hey, we're going to get this house fixed up for you, allow you to move in. I got pictures coming. We just got through siding it. They, they got it sided. Uh, now, next week, we're going to put new doors on it. Uh, this is the one major project that we've been participating in. Now, we've helped individuals with some toilets and with some tubs, but this is a this is a, this is something we'll be able to see uh, from mm -hmm. 
we were able to do the entire home for them. Right. Uh, that the, the home, it, the structure was still good, but everything else. So like I said, they're, they're putting bathtubs, they're putting toilets in it. And I'm, I'm, we're, we're gonna record when the family goes in and sees the house for the first time. But that's that's one thing with the building supplies we've been, because when they first, oh, and the bleach, that's something else. <laughs> The first time they told me about, we got 55 gallon drums of bleach. I was like, there's nothing I can do with that much bleach. And I told some people, they were like, are you crazy? Do you know what you, especially in a pandemic, do you know who's looking for bleach? And I ordered me five 55 gallon drums. <laughs> and, and that's another thing on the six, next Tuesday, weather permitting, our church, we're observing Lent. Mm -hmm. So, Tuesday, Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday, we have food truck come in, going to give special prices on waffles, chicken and waffles, uh, as we prepare for fast. But that same day, we have a community-wide giveaway. The la the things that we've got from the city serving the last two months, especially the Amazon boxes, we're setting everything on the parking lot and allowing the community to come and grab two or three items apiece from, from that on next for next Tuesday. But like you said, the, the building supplies, they have been that, like I said, that's another level. When you tell someone, when you meet someone that's older in the community and ask them, hey, you know, how your bathroom looking? How's your cabinets and your vanity? And they tell you, you know, I can use a new toilet, my toilet's rocking. And when you pull up in front of their home with a brand new toilet, they're like, are you serious? A toilet? <laughs> and I'm like, you said you needed a new toilet. So we're going to give you a new toilet. And, and what if you need anything else, let us know. And people are like, wow, a church that's actually, and I'm like, it's all, and I, and I, and I use two terms. Now I use two terms. It's our partnership with CityServe, and I tell our members, this is your tithe and offering at work. When we're able to do stuff for in the community, they come into church, they see different things. I always use the term. I always want them to know that their tithes and offering is at work because growing up at church, all I heard was give, 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 right, give. Right, Never heard right. anybody saying, this is a result of your giving. Man, CityServe has, like I said, uh, if you ever drove in a stick, stick shift car, we were we were, gear, we were going, but but CityServe took us to that fifth gear. And that was allowing us to, to cruise. I mean, it's just, I mean, I can't say enough about them. The things that, that they, just the relationship with Cesar, I, I, I now have a, a Hispanic friend that I can call and we can talk, man, just not just about city service, but just about life, you right. know, things of that nature. And the guys that you have volunteered there in the in the warehouse is awesome. I, just this, I just was there Tuesday to pick up more siding. There's a guy that's with the recovery center that I grew up with. When I went, when I went into the warehouse on Tuesday, I, you know, I, I, I've been going enough to recognize the people that are in mm -hmm. there. And I knew he had, was dealing with the habit the last time I saw him. But when I saw him in that warehouse, man, I actually teared up because I already, before I even had a conversation with him, I knew what was going on. And we were able to talk before I left. And I was like, man, I'm glad to see that you got yourself together. Please come see me when, you know, he said he has about two months left in the recovery center that he volunteers, that allows him to come and volunteer. He said, man, you you one of the first places I'm coming to see you when I get out of here. I said, man, please do. Please come. I said, please, we can use your help uh, in the kingdom. And he's from Southwest Little Rock. We grew up together. So, man, just city service is just a blessing in so many ways, so many ways. Uh, when I got introduced, I think I introduced maybe 20 churches to city serve after and the guy that introduced me to City Serve, he's not even signed up with City Serve. He just said, "Man, I had a meeting with a guy. Uh, you might want to go see him. You might want to go check him out." And I was like, "Okay, tell me about it." He sent me an email. I signed up. Went met with Cesar and Carson. And I, and I asked. I said, "So how often does he come?" It was like he's not even signed up. We were just introducing him to it, and he's told you. And here I am. And they was like, "If you know anybody else, let us know." And I, some some very. Uh, integrity uh driven churches that i knew i would that this this is not for everybody the city serve is not for every church every ministry does not know how to appreciate a ministry like city serve and, and like i said because 
that's just being honest, coming from where I come from, Drew, if I can be honest. I come from the street. The wrong person gets connected with City Serve will mess the whole situation up. Absolutely. So, and you have to be, you have to be Christ-centered and community-minded in order. If and I tell people, if you're not Christ-centered and community-minded, I have to tell my members <laughs> when they know I'm picking up a truck, Pastor, what we got? I said, we don't have anything. I said, the community has some stuff. And I let our members, I say, it's, it's a gap for us to give you all something. But let me tell you something, for every one item you get, you have to bring me two unsaved, unchurched individuals to bless. And I tell them, I said, that's the only way we can do it. You know, I don't want to seem mean, but God has blessed us with this connection, not to fatten, up, uh, fatten us up, but for other individuals in the ministry or other individuals in the community to be blessed. Right. Like I said, the, uh, the diaper ministry is just, we're able to, visitors come on Sunday mornings. If I see a visitor with a small child, doing my observation, I'll say, hey, thank you for visiting. What size pampers did that child wear? They'll shout what size. I tell my guys, go get us some pampers. <laughs> they don't come looking. They, you know, just these right. ladies don't come looking. They come to worship. And, but to leave with something. We picked up orders where I had extra recliners. And I see men come. And I ask them, hey, man, you got your lazy boy at home? You got your recliner? And they'll look at their wife. No, I want one. Come meet me here at the church tomorrow with a truck. We got one for you. And these individuals have been coming back. You know, we've we've they've been coming back to visit. We've been able to share the gospel with them. And I mean, it's just I could go on and on all day about what all we've been able to experience with the, with the help of uh, City Serve mm -hmm. and the connection there. It's just been awesome, man. It's been awesome. Well, and I think you mentioned earlier the burnout situations. I think depending upon how you grew up, you don't realize how often a family gets burned out of a home or an yes. apartment or something and loses everything. Yes. And the majority yes. of the time they have no insurance. None, none, none. Right, you're right. I've, I've, I've been experiencing this more lately. Uh, people, and now I, one young lady, she every day she go on Facebook because uh, about a month and a half ago, we were able to bless her with a couple of items. Uh, but she connected with another entity that gave, they gave her a lot of stuff. But about a month and a half ago, she said two o'clock in the morning, her daughter came running in the room, working up that her house was on fire. And she says she blames herself because for three months she heard her detector alarm going off, the uh, battery low, and she did not pay attention to it. And she said if she had, she felt like if she had to change the battery, in her uh, uh, fire detect alarm detector, she would have saved, she may have been able to save more stuff in her home. But I told her, we get alarm detectors from City Serve, and we've been helping people through her connection. She's telling people, because people see her go live on Facebook, and some people say, oh yeah, my fire alarm not working, I need to change the battery. She tell me about them, and we connect them and say, hey, we got fire detectors brand new fire detectors, let's trade yours out. Let's let's get you some fire detectors to avoid that type of thing happening to someone else. Something as simple as that uh, for a fire. Now, are you talking about Chanel? Her name was Demetria. No, not Chanel. I do know Chanel with the Chanel, the, Chanel the, uh, had a fire. the advocate. Yeah, yeah. Now, Chanel, I met Chanel during the all of the Black Lives Matter stuff, mm -hmm. the situation. That's when I met Chanel. And you're right. I asked her, did she need some help? But somebody had already connected her with City Serve. Well, I'd, I'd sent um, Fitz Hill over there. That's OK. OK. That's what so, it was. That's what um, it was. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm very I'm familiar. Care of, so. I, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar with Chanel, with the, with the, blonde, with the blonde hair. Well, maybe yeah. this week. She changes it a lot. Yeah, she changed. You're right. You, you you are right. She changes it very often. Very often. She's an amazing yeah, so lady. I, so. Yeah. Yes. 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 So. so. Yeah. Those those fires could be. They could be very. Yeah. Got me. They that the whole dealing with people that has experienced fires within the last year or so keeps me on my toes around my house. You know. I no longer sleep with the doors open. We all sleep with our doors closed, things of that nature, because they recommend that 
sleep with your door closed. So if there is a fire, it doesn't get to you as quick as it would. You may so those type of things, yeah, got me, got my antennas up when it comes to that. Yeah, but Drew, uh, like I said, as far as City Serve, guys thank me for the connection that I've connected them with. You know, churches out of Mariana, Arkansas are now connected with City Serve. They're able to be a blessing in these rural areas uh, where individuals may not may not have the opportunity to to get certain things, like I said. But man, it's it's been a blessing. I'm I'm just excited about the future uh, of uh, that we have as far as city service concerned. Our church asked again when we're gonna when we're gonna feed city serve. Uh, I love to feed people. We had the opportunity to to. Uh, provide lunch for the volunteers uh, mm -hmm. last year. So it's about that time again to come and bring you guys some barbecue. They, Some of them for, from out of state, they never had Sims barbecue. <laughs> so they were able to experience Sims barbecue and some pies, some sweet potato pies. So it's about time. It's a new crew of guys in there now. Yes, Those guys, I think, transitioned out. About every 90 more. days, we, we've got new guys in there, so. Right, so our, our, we're planning something for, uh, probably April to feed some guys probably in April. I'll have to make sure that gets on my calendar. Yes, we need you to be there. We need you to be there so, so you can eat, eat, eat lunch with us. So, Pastor, we, we're so thankful for you and thankful that you made the time just to hop on here and just share about your experiences this morning. So. Thank you, man. I look forward to it. If you need anything else, holler at me, man. We'll I'm do it. Always, we'll do it. If y'all got time, next, next Tuesday, if the weather permits, the, the Mercy Church will be out there for probably about 11 to two or three blessing okay. the community all yep. right that sounds great all right you take care sir and thank you you too much. drew man thank you god bless you drew